So far we've read a book about an island and Miss Lauren read a book about a mountain. And when I read the book about an island, I got a little ahead of myself because I started talking about the water, which made me talk about rivers. And I didn't even read a book about rivers. So I thought today we'd read a book about rivers and then we'll do a science project that introduces rivers on mountains. So first I've got our geography book. Let's look up a river. Okay, here it is. There's our river. You guys see that? It says, river, a large, long stream. Major rivers have many tributary streams, and rivers flow into them. The region drained by a great river and all its tributaries is called a drainage basin or watershed. Okay, so here is the book, The River. The River, written and illustrated by Debbie Atwell. There it is. Guys, tell what season that is. And what other landforms do you see besides the river? In the beginning, there was the river. Trees grew, fish grew big, and one by one, the animals came to drink the water. One morning, a person appeared. He paddled down the river in a canoe. He knew the river was good. He returned with his family. After a while, more people came. They made friends with the first people. They speared fish together. They traded goods. And they shared the river. Do you see other landforms there? Then many new people arrived. They wanted to live on the river too. They fought with the first people. The first people had to leave to find peace. Sounds like we're building a bit of a timeline for this river. The new people cleared the land. They used the timber to build houses. They cut down the trees so fast that sometimes there were too many for the river to hold. So you guys see how they're transporting the trees down the river? They're using it to build villages. This looks like it was a time before cars or trucks to move things or trains. More and more people came. Many houses were built. Towns began to grow. The people used the river for fishing, cooking, washing, and traveling. New inventions changed life for the people. Steamboats took the place of sailing ships. Automobiles took the place of horses. Trains ran beside the waters. The towns grew bigger, faster and faster. More and more warehouses and factories were built and businesses boomed. The animals no longer came to drink. The fish disappeared. There were too many needs what is happening to that river? But the people remembered how it had been. They changed the warehouses. They tore down some of the factories. They planted trees. They wanted to share.
time passed and the river rested and the trees grew. One day, a person appeared. She paddled up the river in a canoe. She saw that the river was good. She returned with her family. Again, fish grew big. People used the waters. There was enough for all. Life had returned to the river. The people had learned to share. The end. All right, so what, it's, what is it like living near a river? We've got living near a river. Let's see what's in here that's wonderful to learn about. Well, first off, check that out. I showed you this when we talked about islands and I pulled out my atlases. This says... On maps, rivers are shown as thin blue lines. Next to these blue lines are little circles or dots. They stand for towns and cities. So you guys can see the blue lines are these rivers. And these big blue blotches are lakes. And you can see the names of towns. And towns are often near rivers. I think we noticed in that book that you needed rivers for communities um, to be able to move goods and, and live and eat. So, rivers flow. Here they are. Past or through many of the biggest cities in the United States. As an example is New York City. It's on the Hudson River. There's New York City and that is a very big river. Long ago, people often settled next to rivers. They drank the fresh water and they caught fish to eat. There's a home built right by a river. People used boats to travel on the river from place to place. They also used their boats to ship goods. There it is. Some cities arose as ports. A port is a town or city with a harbor where ships can dock. Their workers can load and unload the goods. Ports are usually located where big rivers reach the ocean. Products from farms or factories or mines are carried to the port by ship. From there, the goods are taken to other places by truck, train, or on another ship. So that's a very, very, very big river. And it's entering right into the ocean. New Orleans, Louisiana is a big port city. It sits where the Mississippi River meets the Gulf of Mexico. Can you guys see how big those boats are? I don't know that we have many rivers around here quite that big. A city might also grow where two or more rivers come together. Two rivers meet at Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and they form a third river. There may be a waterfall or rapids along the river. That's as far as boats can go on a river. It's a good place to build a city or town. There's a waterfall. Many factories were built at these places. Falling or rushing water turned water wheels. Power to run factory machines came from the water wheels. If you guys hike in Pen Yan on the outlet trail, between Cuca Lake and Seneca Lake, you'll see very old uh, waterfalls that used to power mills just like this. Today, many people use dams to provide power called electricity. So the water rushing through the dam builds power. Food crops need water and moist soil. Some people dig ditches and build pipelines. These carry the river water to their farms. This is called irrigation. Some people live in areas where the land is dry. So to get water, they live near a river. The river provides water to their family. 
Today as well as long as today as well as long ago, there are many reasons why people live near rivers. Do you live near a river? We live near quite a few lakes and they have rivers all running around them. None quite as big as what I showed you in here, but we have lots of rivers near us. Um, okay, so we are going to do a science experiment um, and it's going to help you guys see where rivers start and what happens to rivers. So let's talk about that big mountain that Miss Lauren read about, okay? And we're going to, let me see if I can get this camera to go just where I want it to go. Nope, not there, not there either. Mm, right there, okay. So we're gonna set up a science project right here and you're going to need three pieces of paper. One has our lines on it and two just blank papers. You need a spray bottle, blue markers, and tape. And you should do this project outside, but if you're doing it inside, then make sure you're doing it in a space that can get wet or that can be covered. So I don't want my wall to get wet. So I'm gonna set up this box and we're gonna do it right inside this box. Okay, in the box, and I even put a plastic mat down so that our desk doesn't get all yucky and wet. Okay, so we're going to make a mountain out of these two blank pieces of paper, and we're going to tape it to our mountain paper. This one says, Mount Nothing. So, Penelope, would you like to come make the mountain with me? Okay, let's name our mountain. What are we going to call it? Mount Mysterious. Can you write Mysterious? I don't know how. It's over on the table. Okay. Hmm. And while we're waiting for her, I'm just going to see if I can get us a little bit closer. But my camera is propped up quite a trickily. Okay. So she's going to write Mount Mysterious. Mount Mysterious, you don't need to trace that. Let's leave that be, okay? Um, all right, so it says Mount Mysterious, and this is our, where we're gonna, we're gonna make our mountain landform, okay? So we take our two pieces of paper, and I'm gonna make a fist so that Penelope can use my fist to crumple the paper over. So go ahead, Pen. Okay, crumple, 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 real good. Okay, I'm gonna take my fist out, and you keep crumpling it nice and tight. Okay. I gently open it up and now we've got our mountain and if you guys look at pictures of mountains you're going to see they really do have all these crags and crevices and creeks and some flat spots um, and some mounds okay so there's our mountain and we're going to use our four pieces of tape to tape it down to the corners so one two Tape's got a little bit of the desk attached to it. Go ahead, Pen, do that side. And we're going to try to do this a little faster than we might normal, just so that all our friends can watch and see it go. Okay, kiddo? Okay. All right. So there's our mountain, Mount Mysterious, it take like down. Now what I'm going to have Penelope do is find all these high peak lines, the tallest cracks, and she's going to use blue marker and she's going to trace some of them. Um, you guys will have time to trace most of them, so go ahead and put blue marker on all the cracks, and I want you to actually put it on, um, okay, whoops, got all over me. Put it on really heavy, put a lot of blue on, I just got blue on me. So find those cracks and put all the blue on. All right, so we put our blue lines on all the high spots of our mountain that we could find. 
Um, and Penelope said these look a lot like rivers, and they do, um, but we're not drawing them as rivers. We're just leaving some blue pigment on our mountain so that we can see where rivers and rain would go. So what we're going to have Penelope do in here and you guys at home is it's going to rain. So I only want five squirts of water. See my thumb in there? Five squirts anymore and your paper mountain's going to be very soggy. So it's going to rain. Go ahead. I'll hold it. No, I'll hold it this time so they can see it, but now we know that it can happen in there. Can you come up above it and rain down on it? Okay, so like here's our... Like cool right there? No, nope, just One. up a little higher so you're really like a rain cloud. Two, Two three, three, four. Penny, that was my arm, not the mountain. Sorry. One more on the mountain. Five. Okay, so there's our five rain showers. And we're going to let this dry a little bit. And we're going to see where the rain went down the mountain. So which direction did the rain go in? And, and if I look closely, I can see we've already got rain starting to make a river and run down her mountain. And we're going to let it dry for a second and soak in. And then we're going to do five more rains. Okay, so this time I'm going to put it in so I don't get so rainy. So go ahead, Pen. Five more rains inside the box, please, and respect our home space. Thank you. Okay, one. That doesn't count. Go ahead. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. All right. So five more rains, and now our mountain is wetter and wetter. I'm going to lift it right up with its mat now so you guys can see. Um, and our rivers are starting to form and run down in the mountain. They are not the blue things because rivers don't come up on points. So we can see how when it rains on top of a mountain, um, we can think about where the rain would go and how it would get itself down. And then the same thing happens throughout all of the land. How does the river get from the top of the mountain all the way to an ocean? And you guys should be able to follow them on maps. So if you flip open some of those maps like I showed you the other day, um, you should be able to find where rivers start, sometimes up in ponds up in the mountains and where rain gathers. And you should be able to follow those rivers and they'll connect to other rivers and they'll connect to other rivers and lakes that empty into rivers. And I bet you'll be able to take it all the way to the ocean. So see if you can find a river that goes from here to there. 